Fire in the hole! Troops from around the country have gathered at Fort McCoy to test themselves against each other. It's called the Best Warrior Competition. It, uh, the contest uh, tests military members for skills like shooting and physical fitness. News 19's Pete Zervaka shows you today's challenges. To have a shot at being the military's best warrior, you have to know how to handle a gun. Among those on the firing range today is Sergeant First Class Teresa Ertl. She has a home field advantage in this year's competition because she's stationed at Fort McCoy year-round. So too is Staff Sergeant Cristobal Santana. Each of them is persevering through the pain. Today we started our day out with a, like a six-mile road march and then we had to shoot. For different reasons. I wanted to challenge my skills and see how I compare to my peers. I wanted to show within my unit that I could possibly be the best warrior in my unit. So basically it came down to just competitive spirit. Just three of the 11 reservists competing this week at Fort McCoy will move on to the next round of the National Best Warrior Competition, but the troops say win or lose, they'll remember this week's rigors with a smile. I enjoy the camaraderie that we get and have that you don't get anywhere else at these competitions. That's one thing I always enjoy. It doesn't matter really how hard you train. Sometimes you'll, you'll run into people that have been training harder as you're doing things, as you're getting better at things. Kind of keep always keeping the back of my mind. There's probably somebody out there that's trying just a little bit harder than you are. So it kind of keeps me always moving forward. Reporting at Fort McCoy with photographer John Schmidt, Pete Zervakis, News 19. Westby is a small community and lives and dies by its lo locality. We feed the good products, it's good quality milk, it starts right there. We bring the milk down, put it in the pasteurizer, and from there it comes upstairs up here to the uh, cheese vats. We have two cheese vats, each one holds 16,000 pounds of milk each, which yields about 1,600 pounds of cheese curd. Once we get the milk up and the temperature down, down to the right temperature that it's supposed to be, and uh, we add the culture. We're letting it stir for, for uh, 40 minutes before we set it. And uh, when we set it, it's, it's a coagulant that, that uh, sets up the, the milk. It almost turns it to jello, a form of jello. Usually within a half an hour after we set it, it's ready to cut, and we let it cut it, let it sit for another five, and start the agitation and the cook on it. Every cheese has a little bit different temperature that it gets cooked up to. The cheddar that we're making tonight goes up to 102. That's kind of the, kind of the cat's meow right there. The happy medium between everything. Being that this is cheddar, we got to sit there and do the ditch on it, push the, the curd back, and uh, push it apart with the rake, and uh, start draining the whey down. And then once the whey gets a certain Mount down, sit there and start pushing it apart and all that there, so it for starts forming together. And we cut it up into slabs. And we flip it. We go too high with it, and three high, then four high. And then we run it through the mill, salt it, salt it as we're going, and let it stir for ten minutes after the last of the salt's on. Then we're ready to start running through the machine. 
after they get the curds all milled and salted, they bag them up. We'll be running them through a tumble drum and the elevator system into the packaging machine. And so once they hit the top of the machine, they go into a scale system, which scales them out for, for weight purposes. They drop down from there into the machine where they're bagged. One at a time, they'll drop on, onto our next elevator system. They'll come onto our, our turntable. And from there, we will sticker them with our, with our label. From there, from the code, they go into the box and they're separated into the order. Let's push them back towards the east. There's always a lead bird that's been through this before. So a bird in that flock is well aware of what's getting ready to happen. It's an early morning in Stoddard. Eight boats are out on the river chasing down a group of geese. This puts them under a little bit of stress. So what we're looking at now is the boats we're with trying to make a crescent shape around this flock of geese in the middle. The idea is that by surrounding them, we can slowly and surely push them over to an island further down the river where there's a net waiting to catch them. Think of it as a big box trap. It's a funnel. We're going to move them into a funnel system and move them into a trap. So why don't the geese just fly away? They're currently in molt and that means they can't fly and that's why we do this right now. They replace their feathering and especially their flight feathers which will be on their wings and as they replace those feathers they can't fly. Once the geese are herded into the net the banding process begins. The geese are handed off one by one with their heads sheltered under one wing. They like that's being in this position because the they can't see anything so they're not gonna freak out. Wildlife officials then write down their sex and approximate age before fitting a metal band around one of their legs. All that information gets plugged into a national database. This band will be into a, a database that says this goose is an adult male. It was banded here in Stoddard on this date. A Canada goose not only is a federally protected bird, but it's also what we call a game bird. So we do have a hunting season on them. And when you have a hunting season on any bird, you have to understand that bird to its fullest to ensure that we're not we're keeping populations at good levels. The geese are not hurt during the banding process, and once it's over, they are released back into the water. Reporting in Stoddard with photographer John Schmidt. Pete Zervakis, News 19. Let them walk all the way up the sidewalk. Narcotics officers say the local drug trade is like a house of cards. I'll park here. Make the right arrest, and the entire operation comes crashing down. You can just walk down Court Street right to the side door. Yeah. Investigators in Vernon County hope this man can help them deal the first blow. He was arrested for buying heroin. Rather than go to jail, he agreed to work with police as a confidential informant. Armed with an undercover camera and police money, investigators asked him to buy heroin from 22-year-old Zachary George. This is a kid that was a good athlete in high school not too long ago and um, death of a family member and he just resorted to drugs as a, as a painkiller. They believe he's an entry-level dealer, but if they can arrest him, he may give them the information they need to arrest his supplier and slow down the distribution of drugs in western Wisconsin. He's already talked to him earlier and uh, was told by the target that he was good with heroin and that he could come up anytime. Okay, doors open, CI's out of the building, westbound on the sidewalk. This is video the informant captured inside George's apartment. Police say that's George packaging the drugs. The informant bought three points of heroin, enough to get high three times for just 50 bucks. It was a successful buy. With this evidence, investigators have what they need to arrest George, but they let him walk. The plan is to buy heroin from him one more time so that when they do arrest him, they can charge him with multiple crimes. It's been issued as a knock and announce warrant. But a week later, investigators change plans and decide to take him down. We got information that the uh, target subject is uh, re-upped, what we call, and uh, he's basically received uh, more heroin to start to distribute. So the investigators that are working this case decided it was a good time to go in with a search warrant and uh, attempt to make the arrest. A team of seven officers surround George's apartment building, then slowly and quietly make their way to his front door. Sheriff's Department search warrant, open the door. Open the door, Sheriff's Department. 
Sheriff's Department, search me on Open the door. All right. Hands up. Yeah. Hands up. Hands up where you can. On your face. On your face on the floor. Matt, cover me. Hands behind your back. Where's the floor? You know what the floor. Oh. You got any on you? No. Room's clear, one in custody. Officers searched George's room for more than an hour, but didn't find any heroin. They found the uh, suspect in the bathroom dumping what we believe to be the heroin and whatever other drugs he had down the toilet. And the toilet was flushing as the officers hit the room. Investigators did find what they describe as the materials used to distribute heroin and other drugs, like a scale, and the bags heroin is often sold in. With that evidence and the heroin and videotape they collected earlier, officers have enough to place Zachary George under arrest. If you're dealing drugs in Vernon County, you will be caught.